have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Griffle Ball is back, Wiffle Nerds. The GBL is back. It was an exciting week one with a bunch of drama, a bunch of great games early on in the day, a great nightcap that, unfortunately, the lights went out on us, so we couldn't finish the entire thing. But, hey, Griffle Ball's back. Everyone's happy. The NWA is happy. People are happy. Wiffle Nerds are happy. I'm happy. Rat's happy. Commissioner's happy. Vogus is happy. Kabaki's happy. Arve's happy. Everyone is happy that we are playing Wiffle Ball again on Sundays. Uh, this week, uh, during week one, the Ducks on the Pond made their debut, uh, taking place of the Lightning. So the new expansion franchise made their debut. And it was a little rocky, to be honest. Not the best start you can hope for. Uh, The Nighttime Ninjas, the team they played, just kept their hitting streak going. Like, they're just hitting like crazy every single season. Like, this team can hit. Like, last year they can hit. They led the league in hitting last year. And they're off to a great start this year at the lawn chair. Uh, The Stallionaires against the Bird Gang. The Stallionaires leading some late game heroics, but got it from John Reyna to split the series. And Bird Gang answered back after that late game heroic with a game win of their own from uh, hero Andrew Felday. After that, the nightcap started, and yours truly was there to uh, broadcast it. Not the best performance, if I had to judge myself. I was kind of hungover. Very, actually. Like, a whew, rough night before. So, we'll say not the best performance to get ready for opening day. But I'll be back and ready for week number two, because I think I'm going to stop drinking. I don't think drinking's good. But we can drink at the park, hopefully. That'd be awesome. Bring, like, a case of beer get some shots going. I don't think they would allow that because it's a public park. But, you know, they have patio there, like patios and, like, graduation parties. Why wouldn't we able, be able to? But that, that's a discussion for another time. Uh, the nightcap, the Taka drivers took on the Gas House Gorillas, stood tall, and spoiled their opening ceremonies. They, The Gas House Gorillas took down the banners. There was a whole ceremony. It was a big, big deal. Um, and then Taka drivers came out and uh, won the first game. Took a little bit more than they thought it would, but they did come out and win the first game. So let's go over each series that happened last week in Week 1. Uh, the first slate of games was at 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. The Ducks on the Pond, making their GBL debut, took on the Nighttime Ninjas, who were ready to go, obviously. In Game 1, the Nighttime Ninjas won the game at 4 by a Mercy Rule, 12-2. to Ethan Arve ended that game on a walk-off Mercy Rule home run. And then in Game 2... The Nighttime Ninjas won 11 and nothing. Also by an Ethan Arve walk-off Mercy Rule home run. So they won both games in the same fashion and told the Ducks to pretty much welcome to the GBL. Expect this all season long if you don't get your shit together. Uh, let's just go through the stats for the Nighttime Ninjas. Uh, Ethan Arve was 9 for 17 with 4 home runs and 10 RBIs. Mike Kabaki Jr. was 7 of 12 for 2 home runs and 9 RBIs. They were named co-hitters of the week. And then Derek Rivas, who's now leading the league in average, was 7 for 10 with one home run and four RBIs. Honestly, I should have put all three of them as my co-hitters of the week because the Nighttime Ninjas were just on fire. Uh, As a team, they went 23 of 39 with seven home runs and 23 RBIs. Let's let that sink in for a second. I'll take my time. Yeah, they pretty much kicked the Nighttime Ninjas. Like, they just kicked the Ducks' ass. That's pretty much what happened in week one. Uh, They just dominated the Ducks in experience. Like, the Ducks have a bunch of players on that team who haven't played more than 12 games in the GBL in their career. So they took advantage of that, and they're 2-0 because of it. Uh, Kabaki almost, no, no, not almost, he did throw a four-inning no-hitter in Game 2. If it wasn't for Arve's walk-off home run, he might have thrown a a no-hitter. Also, on the plus side for the Ducks on the pond, Nelman, had his first career hit and RBI, got the RBI off a of walk, got his first career hit earlier in the inning. So congrats to Mark Nelman. Good, good job, buddy. Uh, the big issue I found for the Ducks is like they were extending innings. Essentially, they had two two errors during the game, which extended innings and just let the nighttime ninjas just keep piling on. It just felt like it was never going to end for the Ducks. 
they're going to have to make some adjustments going into next week because they're going to be on Sunday night and everyone's going to be watching because that's going to be on Periscope and that's going to be on YouTube. I'm going to be announcing. People are going to be watching and make sure adjustments are ready because you don't want to get embarrassed on Sunday night Griffith Ball. In our second slate of games, at 5 p.m. and 6 p.m., the Stallionaires took on the Bird Gang. In coming into this series, I didn't expect the Stallionaires to all be there. Uh, they were only missing one player, so, I mean, I was wrong. I only thought two players would show up each week, so I already apologized. So I thought before the season, maybe having Nate Bryan only one or two games a year because he's out in California, pretty much living there. That's what I was told. Uh, I thought Kuna's arm was, I thought he was hurt. Like, I actually didn't think he was coming. I was misinformed. Uh, he's just fine. He just can't throw as hard as he wants to, but he can still locate. He can still locate and get p people out because he's got some nasty stuff. And then uh, Aaron Ross is a new addition. He can be he can be something special. Uh, his first two games didn't get a hit, but got a couple of walks, so he's showing some patience. So he's waiting for his pitch. And then uh, John Reyna on the mound, looking really good. I'm not gonna lie, I liked what I saw from him in the first two games. And then uh, haven't seen anything from David Kunapasek. We expect to see him this week. So. But it was a very tightly consensus series. Uh, the Birking are much improved over last year. I, I really think they fixed their holes that they needed. Like, they were a great hitting team last year, but they couldn't have anyone to pitch for them. After they lost Cole Felbay halfway through the season because of the Lightnings just, just falling apart, uh, they also added Cole back, and they got his brother, Andrew Felbay, as well. Both got him in the draft. Um, I'm not going to lie. Andrew Felbay looks like a great starting pitcher. He could be one of the next great GBL pitchers. Um I do the stuff I see like I'm pretty sure I heard some of the Stallionaires hitters just go I just can't believe what he's throwing right now he was able to locate and throw his fastball and off speed pitches with brilliant location I, I cannot believe it he looks like a dark horse for all stars contention and he should easily be invited back to NWLA because he looked good last year I'm pretty sure he might look even better this year so I feel like those two can be a good one-two punch for the Bird Gang. Uh, speaking of Game One, uh, the Stallionaires looked like they were dead in the water, down two to nothing with a guy on first and nobody out. John Reyna comes through again. This guy seems to be so clutch, like every single year in the biggest moments. This guy is always hitting home runs, always knocked one over the the net and left, tied the game, and then in the sixth inning when he got in the extras. He led it off with a solo home run, so he had the first three RBIs for the Stallionaires in Game 1. And then Kuna added a couple more off, a, I believe, a double. And it was 5-2, and that was the final score. The Stallionaires were, ended up taking Game 1, 5-2, over the Burr Gang. Um, Kuna, in that game, also gets another win. Add that to his win total. I mean, he just keeps winning as he's on the mound, no matter what happens. Uh, then in Game 2, it, the Burr Gang needed to fight back. Um, and they did. Andrew Felde had all five Bird Gang runs in the first game, hit the first two RBIs with a home run. And in the second game, he also had another home run and another RBI. So he's just on fire. Like legit, Felde, Andrew Felde didn't allow a hit, didn't allow a run in five innings pitch, scored all the Bird Gang run, well, got all the Bird Gang RBIs. And he's pretty much and just, just on fire. He only allowed one hit in his five innings, too. Like, he's just... I'm telling you, Dark Horse for Cy Young of the year for 2016. Dark Horse. He's my Dark Horse right now. Calling it. Uh, Aaron Ross, the rookie for the Stallionaires. He didn't get any hits in his debut in his first two games, but he did get to show some good patience at the plate. Took a couple of good hacks. Uh, had a few walks. So, good job for Aaron Ross. Um, let's see if he can improve on next week and see if he can find some hit pitches to hit. Uh, interesting stat about this game. Each team that lost... Bird Gang and Stallionaires only had one hit and two runs in each of their games. So in Game 1 when the Bird Gang lost, they had one hit and two runs. And when the Stallionaires lost in Game 2, they only had one hit and two runs. Interesting. Probably not very notable. Uh, let's go on to the nightcap. After that, at 7 p.m., it was, well, at 7 p.m., it was the opening ceremonies. And around 7.45-ish, it was Game 1. Uh, so we were already kind of fighting the lights a little bit. Uh, the Taka Drivers took on the Gas House Gorillas. <laughs> talking about this is a gbl classic to start off the year you want to talk about a classic didn't i didn't bring my a game on the on the broadcast but they brought their a games on the field uh, i think ryan vogas had a career game he was two for two of seven with three rbis and a home run the, that game winning home run in the ninth where the game took the lead in the ninth with that home run and then on the mound he pitched seven innings 
allowed two hits and zero earned runs and nine Ks and five walks in the first game alone. The stats are up for game number two, but I will not count those stats until that game is finished. But the website does have them finish. But for right now, I'm going to stick to game one from what I know, and I'll see game twos after it finishes. The stats are in the books, but I don't think they should be, but whatever. Uh, Gas House gets some late game heroics in that. Like It was 0-0 uh, zero to zero through three innings. And then in the fourth, Radishak gives up a few runs. Uh, down two to nothing. Uh, and down the two to nothing. The bottom of the fifth, Jim Tucker came to the plate, hit a home run. Ryan Vogus, I'm pretty sure, almost ran through the fence trying to catch it. And then the next batter, what do you know? In Gas House Gorilla style, back to back jacks every single year. I don't know how many times I had to write, say, or even think about the Gas House Gorillas having back to back home runs in a game. It. it I could probably make so much money if I told someone, if I said, like, every time the, they get back-to-back jacks, I get a dollar. I'd probably be $15 richer right now. And as a broke player, or just a broke guy in general, I'd be pretty rich right now with that 15 bucks. I'd enjoy it. Um, so they were able to send that game into extras. So in, after five, we were knotted at two. And now we're definitely fighting the lights. It's like 8.30, 8.35 right now. And the sixth, seventh, and sixth, seventh, and eighth innings, there was really nothing going on. Each Vogus struggled in the sixth, but got out of the jam. Uh, had the bases loaded, was able to get out of it with two straight outs. And then it it took till the ninth inning. One swing of the bat, Ryan Vogus hits a home run, gives the team a three-two lead, and just it just felt like Gas House couldn't ca- capitalize after that. They used all their juice early on in the game, and Taka ended up winning the game in nine innings. And by that time, we were looking at nine o'clock. So we start game two. I'll I'll go through game two real quick. Um, but let me just let me just go through some game ones. Each Taka player, the, let's just go through a little bit of game one. Ryan Gallagher was 0 for 8 with six strikeouts. Not the best performance, but he did make it up in game two. And then Nick Babowski also 0 for 6. So the back house of the back end of that batting order, Gallagher usually leads off for the team 0 for 8, and then. Bobo was 0 for 6. They're 0 for 14, so probably not the best way to start a season, but I, those players will probably improve as the season goes on. Uh, the Taka Drivers also got one hit apiece in their game, so they all contributed in Game 1. Uh, Radishak, six innings pitch, four hits allowed, and three earned runs with eight Ks and two walks. He struggled again to start off the year, but I feel like he does that every year. As the closer of the year, I feel like there should be no struggling for Jeremy Radishak. He's got a wicked slider and a fastball, but I believe teams are starting to catch on to it because his slider is becoming more noticeable. We're even calling sliders as we're announcing the game. So if we're calling sliders, the hitters know they're coming. Maybe it's just hard to get the bat on the ball, but eventually he's going to have to work, find a way to work around that pitch and maybe add something else to his repertoire. Um... But those that's how I feel about the game. He's still, I'm not going to lie, not going to give Rat any crap. But on the mound, he could use a little work in game one. He didn't lose that game for him, but he also didn't win that game for him. Let's keep it at that. Not the best performance, but he did last year in last year's postseason. Like if you could flip the switch, pretty much turned it on out of nowhere. Um, so that's it. Let's the, Way too early standings. The nighttime ninjas are 2-0. and The taco drivers are 1-0. The Bird Gang and Stallion Airs are both 1-1. One and, one. and the Ducks on the Pond are 0-2. And the Gas House Grills are 0-1. So, probably not going to say the same way. And if it does, I'd be majorly shocked because the last place team is the Gas House Grills because they've only played one game. Uh, let's go for our way too early stat leaders. Uh, our average, Derek Revis hitting 700. Jeremy Radishek hitting 600. Mike Kabaki Jr. hitting 583. Ethan Arve hitting 529. Ryan Vogus hitting 417. League leaders in home runs, Ethan Arve with four, and then four of them are tied at two. Radishek, Kubaki, Reyna, and Gallagher. Uh, RBIs, uh, Arve's got ten, Kubaki's got nine, Feldy's got five, Gallagher's got five, Revis has got four, and Kuna's got four. Uh, players who all have zero ERAs on the mound, Revis, Kubaki, Vogus, Kuna, Tucker, Feldy, and Gallagher. And Vogus and Radishek are tied with the most strikeouts on the mound. Uh, speaking of... Game two, I almost forgot about it. Uh, Taco Drivers and Gas House Gorillas. 
Uh, they started off, the Gas House Gorillas started off the first inning with a grand slam with from Ryan Gallagher. Also hit another home run later in the game. They have a 6-4 to four lead over the Taka Drivers. The Taka Drivers, all their runs have come off nothing but just good hitting. No home runs from them. So right now it's 6-4 to four in the top of the fifth with two on and nobody out. And right when it was getting interesting, lights go out. No more lights. We're done. We have to stop playing, do what we're doing. And just everyone just scrambled. There's a fence in center field now. The fence is in center field. They had to rip that down. I had to rip down the tables to get everything ready. Get all my equipment done. Like, it was crazy day. Very, very crazy. Crazy ending. Very anticlimactic, but I believe they're going to make it up the next time they play, which is week six. So, so we're going to lead off from there, and they're going to go into their next two games after that. Uh, let's go ahead and look forward to week number two. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, we got the Bird Gang and the Taka Drivers taking on each other at 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. Our probable starters for 3 p.m. are Andrew Felde versus Ryan Vogas. That should be a classic. And 4 p.m., Cole Felde would take on Mark Mezdikowski. That should also be a good one. Um, Buzz, Jackson Buzia, Buzz, doubtful for both games. Doubtful, so that means he may still show up. If you're saying there's a chance... I'm going to take it. Uh, Lucas Baker also expects to make his debut for the Burr Gang. Uh, each of the first starters in the 3 p.m. game, uh, Andrew Felde and Brian Vogus, did not allow a single run last year. Or not last year, last week. Last year, that would have been amazing. Um, so, <laughs> I don't think they'll give up a single run through three innings again. So, expect the same thing. I, I don't think each team will get a hit until someone breaks. Like, I almost think like this game's going to end one nothing, But I feel like it's going to change a little bit. Um, I feel like without Buzia, the Taka drivers could miss their tone setter on the top of the lineup. He usually sets a good tone for that team. He's always leading off. He's always getting on base some way. Like, I feel like that's going to be a very pivotal part of their offense in the season. And I feel like if they're missing it against a team who's much improved over last year, this can hurt them. And hurt my predictions, saying I thought they were going to go 17 and three, and they're pretty much one and zero, but one and a half because they're about to lose that game, but they haven't really lost that game yet because it hasn't been made up. So we'll see how that goes. I really expect low-scoring games from these two. If either team scores over five runs, something went wrong on the mound. Someone lost control. One swing of the bat took the took it from one to nothing to five to nothing. I just feel like that's how it's going to happen. Uh, also, the Burger King, I feel like, are better than expected. I didn't see it. Like, I, I predicted they'd make the playoffs this year, so I credit Matt Zorowski for getting this team in order the way he wanted to and flipping the roster. He said, no, it's Zorowski, Baker, and the Felde brothers. Like, that's a pretty good roster. You got to like that. I, I like what I see. Uh, the Taka Drivers are looking to stay undefeated, too, uh, for now. For now, like I said, for now. We'll see. Um, they have some good players. Bartley, Mez, and Vogas can definitely carry this team without Buzz. They they don't need Buzz, but I feel like with Buzz, that team would be over the top. Like you get you list you missed the guy who had led the league in averages last year and was pretty much second the year before. That's going to be tough to miss. That's going to be tough to replace. So I feel like the Bird Gang X factor for this game is Lucas Baker. Baker's making his debut. Hit 439 last year with seven home runs and 22 RBIs. Caught on to the game really fast. Kudos to him. And then I feel like the Taka Drivers X Factor is Jackson Buzia. Will he show up or will he not show up? That is the question. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, so my prediction, I feel like that's going to be a split. At 3 p.m., I have the Taka Drivers taking down game one, 4-1. to one. I don't have Felday getting the loss. I feel like they'll win in that game a little later in the innings. And at 4 p.m., and these are predictions are without buzz. So at 4 p.m., I have Bird Gang winning 3-2, to two, so I believe they have split the series somehow. Uh, let's go on to the next slate of games. We have the Nighttime Ninjas and the Gas House Gorillas. At 5 p.m., the Probables. Uh, Ethan Arve versus Ryan Gallagher. And at 6 p.m., the website says Krucek versus Gallagher, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was Kabaki after the way he pitched last week. And some of his stuff was really good. It looked a lot better than it did last year. It didn't look flat. It looked... It had some movement to it. I feel like he found something. He's always told me he found something. He found something in the offseason. He was telling me about it. I feel like he did. I don't know his secret. I can't reveal his secret. But I feel like he did find something. Um, so it looks like Jim Tucker is going to be out for both games, according to the website. 
Uh, that's a big hit for the Gas House Gorillas. That's their ace. Like he is their ace and extra inning player. Like he's the guy who's going to come on the mound in extra innings, and he is the guy who's going to shut down teams in the first three innings or more. So that's a big loss already. That's already factoring into my decision at the end of the game. It looks like Sammy Krucheks and Krucheks, Sammy Krucheks and Niall Letts are expected to make their debuts today. Uh, well, not today, but week two. So. That could be big for the Nighttime Ninjas. They're going to have a five-man roster with Kabaki, Arve, Revis, Krucek, and Letts. Like, there's, there's, a bats are going to be starting to become a little bit less than normal. Because you're having five players play. The at-bats are going to be spread out, and someone like Arve can get those at-bats because he's the MVP. And also leads the lead in RBIs and home runs already, and it's only week one. So those that that could come into a factor as well. Uh, I just feel like the ninjas are on a tear. Like they twenty three to two against the ducks. I don't care who you are. If you're mercy ruling someone in the first two games, you are destined to be there at the end of the year. I have them in my World Series against the Taka Drivers. I'm gonna stick to that opinion for the rest of the year. If I'm wrong, I was all pretty much wrong last year. I did not pick Gas House to win. And I'm not picking Gas House to win this year. And if Gas House wins this year, I give up on predictions. But they're just ready. I feel like they have the best offense in the league. Like, I, one through five. If I haven't seen anything from Letts, from, but what I see from his numbers, he's my X-Factor, by the way. So let's go into the X-Factor since I'm speaking of him. In 2011, he had 15 games and 17 home runs. It's a home run per game. They had different bats back then, but power has declined since the bats changed. But I still think that's a good indicator that he might be a great player for that team. Uh, and I also feel, I feel like they have a good chance going forward out without Tucker playing. Like I feel like I'm on the Ninja's bandwagon right now. It's just someone just color me purple and give me a Ninja outfit. That's how I feel right now. But I just this is how I feel about this team. They started off really hot. They ended the season hot last year, ran into a bad matchup, and lost in three. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. Sometimes matchups just play a factor in wiffle ball. Uh, speaking of the, the Gas House Gorillas, uh, they need to somehow keep up with the Gorillas' offense. They can. They're a home or happy team, just like the Ninjas. Uh, Gallagher, bad first game, good second game. Hasn't finished the second game yet, but has a great second game in the books against the Taka Drivers. Uh, Radishak. Also, one of the best hitters in the league. I don't know why we need to even talk about Radishak anymore, but he is by far one of the best hitters in the country with a wiffle ball bat in his hand. Doesn't matter what kind of ball we're using. One of the best hitters in the country. Period. And I expect to see a lot of home runs between these two. If I don't, I'd be surprised. My over-under for both games is six home runs. Usually you average around four to five, so I think we're gonna go over six. So I'm seven or eight is what I'm seeing. If that doesn't happen, whatever. I was wrong. I'm always wrong. Um, and last year, the Cast House Gorillas weren't very good against the Ninjas. I believe they only took one game. I believe the Ninjas were three and one against the Gas House Gorillas. I could be wrong. I don't remember the schedules. I could go back up and look at it. But I just remember. I do remember the Gas House Gorillas. Jim Tucker's only two losses, even though he won't be pitching, were against the Nighttime Ninjas. So, that has something to say. So, I believe the Ninjas' X-Factor, you already heard it from me, is Niall Letts. And then the Gas House Gorillas' X-Factor, I believe it's got to be Nick Babowski. He's got to turn his season around right now. He's only got a couple of hits, so we've got to see what he can do. But he's got to get it turned around right here, get some power to the plate, and show he can hang with the Gas House Gorillas and see what he can do. Uh, my prediction, all purple, all ninjas. 5 p.m., I have the ninjas winning 6-3. to three. And at 6 p.m., I have the ninjas winning 4-2. to two. So I have the nighttime ninjas sweeping the Gas House Gorillas and dropping the Gas House Gorillas to 0-3 while the ninjas go to 0-4. It's very early in the season, so I'm not too worried about the Gas House Gorillas start, period. Uh, the Stallion, and for our nightcap, hosted by yours truly. T Walk at G at T Walk GVL. Stallionaires, one and one. We'll take on the Ducks on the Pond who are 0 2. At 7 p.m. the website, we got Reyna versus Brillmeyer. At 8 p.m. we got Kunapasik versus Siokis. It looks like Brian Brillmeyer, the manager of the Ducks on the Pond, much needed last week, will be making his appearance. Expected to make his appearance. And David Kunapasik, one of the best rookies from last year, 
will be making his appearance as well. Uh, these are the Ducks on the Pond's first Sunday night griffle ball games. Uh, you guys are going to have to show up. You're going to hear me in the background talking about the game. Be prepared. Players already know. I could get into players' heads. I don't know why I get into players' heads. They know I'm just announcing the game and reacting to what I see. But I'm pretty sure Chris Bartley last week pointed right back at me and said he's already getting into my head. So, dear Ducks, I'm not sorry. I'm doing my job. I like doing it. It's fun for me. Deal with it. And if I give you any crap, you can give me crap right back. I'm sitting right next to you. I'm a grown man. I won't cry. I might cry. I won't cry. But deal with it. Uh, so another couple of news. Matt Kuna. He's also two home runs shy of 70 career home runs. Great GBL career. I hope it never finishes. I hope we can keep playing the GBL for a few more years or... I wouldn't know what to do with my summer, honestly. I do have a little bit of a side gig with another company now, but I got paid for wiffle ball too, so I'm getting paid for both, so let's see what goes on. Um, the Ducks need to adjust, period. Like they have to they have to adjust fast or the stallionaires will make them pay. Like you don't want to walk into this league and try to compete and then have every other team pretty much stat pad you. You don't want that to be you. Like That's not what you come into the league for. You come into the league to compete because you think you can win. So I need to, the Ducks need to turn it around, period. I like There's nothing you can do. You need to start hitting. Got to start hitting. You only scored two runs last week. And only In one of those games, you got no hit. Either show some patience at the plate or put the bat on the ball. Like... I feel like there could be a big adjustment period for this team. It might take a while to get their first win, so we'll see what happens. But I do expect a better better fight from them this week than I saw last week. Last week was a terrible matchup. The nighttime ninjas will just eat people alive if you're not if you're new to this game. Period. Uh, and speaking of the Stallionaires, I'm actually mildly surprised about the Stallionaires. Uh, last week I saw Kuna, Reyna, and Aaron Ross, and this week I expect to see all four of them. Before the season, I looked at the steamer projections and I the rumblings I heard I didn't think anyone would be playing like Nate Bryan is still on the roster too but he's never coming most likely so the national fielder of the year they're going to miss that also one of the better hitters tone setters and it, it, that's a big loss to their team and trying to replace it is Aaron Ross so we got to see what happens but it's basically the same team as last year like you're going to see these players every week. I, I thought they'd be alternating every week. I mean, people have lives. Like, I expected them not to be here every week. So, dear Stallionaires, I apologize. You have proved me wrong in one week. You show with three out of four, and I bet I'd only see two of you every week. So, my apologies. Apology accepted. Thanks, guys. Uh, I also expect the Stallionaires to win both of these games, to be honest. We'll get to the prediction in a second. Uh, my Ducks X Factor is Brian Brillmeyer. Didn't see him last week. Very raw potential for power and hitting. So we'll see what happens with him as well. And then the Stallionaires X Factor is Aaron Ross. Whatever he can show us gives anything extra to them. So my prediction for the Stallionaires and the Nightcap. At 7 p.m. I have the Stallionaires winning game 1, 8-3. to three. And At 8 p.m. I have the Stallionaires winning game 2, 7-2. to two. Those are my final thoughts on week 1 and week 2. I'm going to leave you with a little tidbit. little tidbit. I know this is really early to talk about the NWLA tournament, but I'm going to anyways. My thoughts on the roster. I need to be heard. We need to... Dear Commissioner, the Griffle, Griffle Ball needs to bring anyone who can help. I don't care how many people you can bring. Just bring them. We can all sleep in a hotel. It's not a big deal. We can figure it out. So Radishek, this is the roster I want to see of every single player coming. Radishek, you're coming. I want to see Arve. I want to see Kuna. I want to see Nate Bryan, if he is able to play a game. I want to see Andrew Felde, for sure. I want to see Mike Kabaki, Ryan Voges, Jackson Buzia, Sammy Krucek, Ryan Gallagher, and Kyle Lister, if he's able to play a game. Those are the 10 players. I think that's 10. I'm almost positive. That is 10. That's uh, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Give yourself some options. You... Like if you have someone, if you have someone who has is good at something, give them a shot. We can do this. They 
Griffle Ball can win. We can compete with the guys in WSCM. We can compete with them. Well, we we should have we should have made it a little bit further last year, but we ran into Flackney and he had himself a fantastic game against us. So there was nothing we can do, and the way we lost was very anticlimactic. But that's what I'm going to leave you with. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for listening, Wiffle Nerds. I'll see you guys back for week two on Sunday. This is Tyler Walk from Griffle Ball and the Inside the GBL podcast. Wiffle out. <laughs>